surrounded the Kabaka's palace on the hilltop outside Kampala, and the battle began. The palace fell at dusk. The Kabaka, apparently, had escaped, either before or during the fighting. Next day, the palace was set on fire. But in the Buganda countryside, the flame of rebellion is reported to be burning equally fiercely. On Friday, Dr. Aboti called a press conference. Mr. President, have you any news of the whereabouts of the Kabaka? First of all, uh, may I intervene, Mr. President? If any of you would like to ask a question, could you give us your name and the member you represent or whatever organization you are representing? Sandy Gall, Independent Television News, London. Mr. President, have you any news of the whereabouts of the Kabaka? That question, I understand, uh, has been asked already in the press and elsewhere. But I do not know why you should ask me that question now. But the most interesting thing is that the pressmen seem to think that the Kabak has done nothing wrong. That it's only the government that has done wrong things. The Kabaka requested foreign troops in February without authority. The Kabaka organized a rebellion. And these are not noticed. But no problem, we'll always wear that too. It's been said that you'd like to put an end to the Kabaka ship. Is that so? <laughs> it's not my problem to put uh, an end to Kabaka ship. We have four Kabaka ships in Uganda. And it's not, uh, I don't have to go for one. If I wanted to put an end to Kabaka ship, I would go for four, not one. Do you expect the emergency to last much longer? Until the situation comes to normal. How would you describe the situation now? Getting quiet. It was quiet yesterday, it's quiet today. No, no fighting at the moment? There hasn't been any fighting. <clears throat> Except around the palace? Around the palace there was no fighting. What about the uh, mortars and the, the rifles and the machine guns and so on? Which... Machine guns were in the palace. We have kept at some. Guns were in the palace. We have kept at some. 
We think others are still there, buried in the ground. There have been reports of plans for resistance on the part of the Baganda and of leaflets being distributed. And this resistance, it said, may start on Monday, the original date of the ultimatum from the Kabaka to you. Do you have any knowledge of these reports? We are prepared for anything. And my guess is that there won't be any resistance unless foreigners try to pop their noses into it. But we'll, we'll cut down their noses to shape. Who do you think might intervene from outside? I can't say anything. I don't want to mention any countries. Have you any information about the casualties in the recent fighting around the palace? I can't tell you that. But I'm informed that uh, about 20 people lost their lives. About 20. There have been suggestions that hundreds of people were killed. I don't work on suggestions. I work on actual reports that come to be signed by appropriate officers. And these are that about 20 people were killed in all, on both sides, on the side of the security forces? Not a single security man was killed. Not a single. What about outside the palace, in the, in the countryside? Another the... 20. That's 40 altogether. So you discount reports that up to a thousand people have been killed? I am told the BBC said a thousand. Uh, are you Mr. Hayes, Charles Hayes, by any way? No, independent television. Dr. Boti said that only 40 people had been killed in the disturbances in Kampala and in the rest of Uganda. But nobody that I've talked to in Kampala believes this figure. In fact, the general impression is that the number of dead runs into several hundred, if not into several thousand. One reliable source gave me the figure of 1,700 dead. I talked to one African who lives just over the hill there who said that he'd seen three lorry loads of bodies being driven away from his own village. And another African who reported seeing bodies being dumped in a mass grave near the prison at Port Bell on the shore of Lake Victoria. Only a mile from the palace, I spoke to a Muganda whose family were in the Kabaka service. As a member of the Baganda tribe who lives, in fact, very close to the palace, have you any estimate of how many Baganda lost their lives, have lost their lives in the recent trouble? Yes, at the moment, uh, when you come to underestimate the number of people who have lost their lives in Buganda, they are between three to four thousand people. Have you lost any members of your own family? Yes, uh, two of my relatives have lost their lives in this incident. But on my, my way back from where I was, it's eight miles from Kampala. I found some people on the road being chased by the army, and people had been killed on the road. A number of people, in fact, were being killed on the road. What have you heard about the uh, situation in Kampala itself? In, the situation in Kampala was terrible because uh, what, I, what I can remember, my brother was was arrested by the army and he was taken to the to the palace inside the palace to lift some of the dead bodies and load them in the, on, on the truck on the army truck when he came back from there he told me the whole story what was happening with him how many how many bodies did he see and he told me he had lifted about 50 people 50 dead dead bodies and loaded them on the truck what happens now depends largely on the kabaka if he commits himself and his people to resistance, a long drawn out Mau Mau war could develop in the lush forests and savannas of Uganda. Like the Kikuyu of Kenya, the Baganda are the most advanced, the cleverest tribe in the country. They number about two million, while the Uganda army is only about 3,000 strong, too small to control a big country in the face of determined opposition. On top of all this, the army is reported to be dangerously close to getting out of control. Another mutiny is not impossible. If that happens, Uganda could blow up into another Congo. Already the refugees are streaming out of Kampala, heading for the safety of the bush.